I'll thank you all for being here for this historic day for Illinois State University. I would like to start by first thanking <clears throat> our president, Dr. Carrie Terry Gauss Kinsey, for her support during this process. Uh, she's been a tireless ambassador of ISU athletics and the university. Uh, her leadership makes it possible for us to aim high and to shoot for excellence in all that we do. So we want to thank President Kinsey. I also want to point out uh, that Coach's family, Stephanie and Maddox, are here today as well as their extended family. Uh, I had a chance to get to know them a bit, and they're awesome people who are going to fit right in here in Bloomington Normal. Uh, also, Maddox is a great basketball player, so some lucky AAU team in town is going to grab him up pretty quickly. Uh, secondly, I'd like to thank my team, Sean Johnson, Leanna Bordner, Nona Richardson, and Emily Newsom put in countless hours helping review candidates and narrow our search. Also, my deputy AD, Mark Mulhauser, was with me every step of the way from the beginning uh, of this process right up now until this press conference. Thank you, Mark, for your hard work and your support. I would also like to thank Collegiate Sports Associates, led by Todd and Drew Turner, for their assistance with our search. They did a great job of coordination of candidates and background research. I also want to recognize and thank uh, the Missouri Valley Commissioner Jeff Jackson, who is here with us today. Thanks for being here, Jeff. Uh, and his progressive leadership that is making our conference stronger in the national landscape. We're really excited about the teams that he's added to our conference, which makes the Missouri Valley even stronger. I also want to thank who's watching today, our most celebrated basketball alumni, Doug Collins. Uh, Doug and I met for seven hours in Phoenix about this position and he was kind enough to provide feedback and talk to candidates that we were focused on. His advice, counsel, and passion for ISU basketball in this community were a huge help to me in finding our coach. Finally, I would like to thank all of our donors, fans, and staff for being here today and for your passion for ISU athletics. This position is an amazing job because of the history, tradition, and support. This is a basketball community, and that enthusiasm attracted some great candidates and is a huge reason that Coach Ryan is taking this position. Uh, we'll talk about the process a little bit. Now, the process was quick, but deliberate and thorough, and all roads led back to the candidate we chose to hire. We reviewed the biographies and resumes of over 60 potential candidates, uh, which included Division II head coaches, Division I head coaches, and a group of assistants. We found tremendous interest from the large list of candidates that we reached out to. In all of our conversations with candidates, we were consistently reminded about the resources we have for success at ISU and the belief that we belong at the top in the Missouri Valley Conference as the conference membership transitions again. We are looking to provide hope to our fans, support for our student athletes, win Missouri Valley championships, and go to the NCAA tournament. Therefore, it was critical we find a coach that wanted to be at Illinois State and valued what we had to offer to be successful. A proven leader that was either a head coach or an assistant that was fully prepared in all aspects to take on the seat as a first-time head coach. Someone who had the belief, passion, values, and competitiveness to return ISU men's basketball to conference and national prominence. Someone who could recruit the Midwest, particularly our state, as well as St. Louis and Indianapolis. All of those qualities led us to Coach Ryan Peden. Ryan began his journey as a student athlete at the College of Wooster, and he understands hard work. Ryan is deeply committed to his family. Stephanie and Maddox, who I mentioned, are here with us today, along with their extended family. Uh, he talked about a focus on doing today well and living out values and standards every day within the program. He is a relationship-driven coach, and he challenges uh, not to just talk to his players, but his former players and their parents as well. Uh, we did that, as you can see in our press release, with a couple of former Redbirds in Eric and Michelle Liddell. Uh, many are aware of their son, AJ, and his current success at Ohio State. Ryan will recruit the right kids that are all in. Uh, he understands building a program as opposed to assembling a team and finding players in our geographical footprint. On top of all that, Ryan and I just had a personal connection that made us both believe we could work together and accomplish amazing things at ISU. This alignment will be critical to our success. Now, with all that being said, it is my sincere pleasure and honor to introduce to our fans, donors, staff, and community, 
and the top recruits in Illinois, Chicago, St. Louis, Indianapolis, and the nation, our new head men's basketball coach, Ryan Peden. It, it, uh, I appreciate it. It is, it is great uh, to be here today, and, and uh, I, wa I want to reiterate off the top um, how impressed my family and I have been through this process, um, getting to know Kyle and Mark, getting to know more about the community here. Um, we've been nothing but impressed. We walk in the door excited as, as we possibly could could be. So this is an honor. Um, I'm very grateful for this opportunity. I'm filled with gratitude. It's a special day for our family. So thank you all for being here. I'd like to lay out a few of my thoughts. I think that's important uh, on the direction of the program, what it will look like moving forward, um, and how we will operate as a basketball program. But first, I do have some people that I would like to acknowledge. First, I'd like to thank President Kinsey. Also, Athletic Director Kyle Brennan, and Deputy Athletic Director Mark Mulhauser for their opportunity to be their head coach here at, at Illinois State University. I tend to follow uh, my instincts in times like these. I'm an instincts guy. I'll say I felt a real connection with both Kyle and Mark in our conversations, rooting back to the very first conversation we had over Zoom. I'm grateful for their faith in me. I'm indebted to you and President Kinsey Thank you for the opportunity. I would also like to thank the players that I have coached over the last 21 years. So many times during press conferences like these, I feel that head coaches sometimes forget who helped them get to where they are. I'm an assistant coach, and I'm very relationship driven. I would not be here today if it were not for the players that I've had the opportunity to coach over the last 21 years. I'd like to thank all the coaches that have impacted me along the way as well. Dating back to my high school coach, Gene Millard, who has been like a second father to me. My college coaches, Steve Moore, Doug Klein, thank you for guiding me through some very formative years in my life. Also, thank you to the former head coaches that I have worked for as an assistant coach. I've been lucky to work for five distinctly different head coaches at six separate institutions. Charlie Coles, Miami of Ohio, a man that gave me a start in this business. Jim Christian, Kent State. Todd Kowalczyk, University of Toledo. John Gross, the University of Illinois. And Chris Holtman, Butler University and The Ohio State University. I would like to give special thanks to Chris, Lori, and Nora Holtman. Spending the last seven years as members of their extended family has been life-changing. Chris's support, through this process has meant so much to me. Thank you, Holdman family. I would also uh, like to make a couple introductions before I get started here. And, and uh, first, I would like to acknowledge my mother, Sally Peden, who is here, drove over from Columbus, and I sure appreciate that. My sister, Amy Kramer, um, and her family made the trip from Cincinnati. She's here with her husband, Reggie, and their children, Ryder and Finley. My in-laws, Scott and Laura Woodruff, who came here all the way from South Carolina on short notice. Um, and a very close lifelong friend of mine, Aaron Gilbert, who came all the way from Columbus uh, on his own. So I appreciate, I appreciate all them being here. Last but certainly not least, I would like to thank my family. Sorry, I knew this would probably happen. <laughs> this is a special day for our family. You know, our profession can be hard on families. The long hours, the time spent away from home, the unforgiving lifestyle that we often lead as coaches, their love, support, and willingness to sacrifice means everything to me, so thank you. I love you. It's the last time I look at you too, buddy. <laughs> You'll make me cry more. Okay, so now I'd like to lay out some of my thoughts. Um, I'll be as, as quick and distinct as I can be, but uh, uh, these, are, these are things I feel passionately about. I'd like to share them um, with Redbird Nation. Okay, first, why Illinois State? For me, 
My interest in Illinois State was very high from the very beginning. After having a chance to talk to and meet Kyle and Mark, uh, that interest only rose for me. It checked all the boxes that I looked for in an opportunity to become head coach. It's a do both place, a great academic institution with a high level commitment to, to competitive basketball. And that is very important to me. A beautiful campus to recruit to, a great location with a rich talent pool within a 200 mile breadbasket. All within less, all within 200 miles, major cities of Chicago, St. Louis, Indianapolis, and Milwaukee. I can assure you, we will exhaust all of our efforts to win recruiting battles within this 200 mile breadbasket. A basketball program here with a rich tradition, check my box. A community where basketball is important and an important part of the fabric, that checked my box. And a passionate fan base that will support its team. I had a conversation with Doug Collins late last week and it was abundantly clear, it became abundantly clear to me how passionate he is and the people in this community are about Redbird basketball. I cannot tell you how important that was for me as a coach coming in here to understand that and hear that from him. His passion is well documented. And Doug, I appreciate our conversation and our relationship moving forward. I will lean on you heavily. The vision for our program, in terms of our vision, I have a strong belief that clarity of vision will create quality of action. I tried to con convey my clear message on this program throughout the interview process. My message today to Redbird Nation is simply this. It's time to get our swagger back. My vision for this program is to become a consistent standard of excellence in the Missouri Valley Conference, and in doing that, become a player on the national stage once again. We have a lot of hard work ahead of us in the days, weeks, and months ahead, but I know that it can be done here. Philosophically, our program will be rooted in a very values-based culture. This is what I come from, and I'm thankful that now I get to translate what I've used and what I've learned as an assistant coach and impart that on my own program here at Illinois State. Our players will conduct themselves with honesty, integrity, humility, and class. This is important to me. We will challenge our student athletes to reach their potential as people, players, students, and athletes. We believe in that type of holistic development and that will be a major key to their growth and progress within our program. It's very important to me that our players' lives are positively impacted by their experience in our basketball program. From a basketball standpoint, I have a strong beliefs that are deeply rooted in the fundamentals of the game on both sides of the basketball. Our program will err on the side of simplicity over complexity. We'll strive to dominate games with our effort and our toughness. Offensively, we will play an attacking style of offense that places an emphasis on both ball and player movement. We will play with great pace. We will value efficiency. We will impose ourselves physically on our opponents. And we will play inside out, side to side, and through the paint. Defensively, we will be tough and physical. We will set our defense, we will protect the paint, and we will make our opponents earn it by finishing over us, not around us. Recruiting. In terms of our recruiting philosophy, I have strong beliefs that there is nothing more important in recruiting than finding talented players who fit our system, our culture, and our values. And I assure you that's not coach speak. I am uninterested in compromising fit. Trying to fit a round peg through a square hole is simply not part of our formula. We will have an inside-out recruiting philosophy that will guide our efforts within the state of Illinois and throughout the Midwest. While we will have an ability to recruit nationally very well, I want to make this very clear today. Recruiting our state and region will be very important to our staff and our program here at Illinois State University. To our former players, my message is very simple. You will be valued at a high level by this program. We have a rich basketball tradition that has paved the way for our current program. I look forward to meeting former players, coaches, managers, and staff. 
The connection between our past and our present is very important to me as, and, and always will be as the leader of this program. Lastly, to our campus and community. My favorite quote comes from legendary football coach Woody Hayes, who said, you win with people. This notion could not ring more true for us as we begin to build the next chapter of Illinois State men's basketball. My family and I look forward to meeting everyone, to integrating ourselves into your culture. And please, I ask that you judge us by our actions, not our words. We look forward to proving ourselves. To join the Redbird family is an honor. We are grateful to be a part of this family, and we look forward to meeting everyone in the weeks and months ahead. Thank you. Hi, Brian. Uh, Jim hey. Benson here from the Hi, Panagraph here in town. Cover the team. Congratulations. Hi. Thank you, Jim. Good to meet you. Um, what is going to be your message to the players on the roster now? Because obviously things are going to be moving pretty fast for them as far as possibly going into the transfer portal and uh, what you might want to do for them to stay here. Sure. So I, I, I've, I've got, I think, you know, I've got a challenge in terms of um, – the fact that I won't be here on a daily basis. I think that's, that's number one. But my job, Jim, is going to be to get in here, to establish relationships with these players, and evaluate where each of them are at. Um, there's a lot to learn here in a short time. Um, I've expressed to them, I'm not going to sell them on buying something um, that they don't want to be a part of. I, I, the, the, the first key for me will always be relationships. And if I can com communicate with them in truth and honesty, um, understand where they're at on their journey, what they're looking for, um, at the end of the day, we want players that want to be here. We want players that take pride in being here. And we, take, we want players that take pride in wearing the name on the front of their jerseys. So I'm very confident we'll find those players, my hope is, the guys in that locker room are going to jump on board. Hello, I'm Charlie Schlenker with WGLT Public Radio here on campus. Um, this is a year where there have been a lot of head coaching vacancies, I think north of 60. Uh, some of them, a significant number of them, check all of the same boxes that you say ISU checks. What makes the incremental difference here? Well, I think, I think Timing and opportunity factors into it as well. You know, this, this job was available and open before any in the country. And when it came open, I knew this was a place that was going to pique my interest. I believe sometimes in life um, other forces kind of lead you in certain directions. And... Um, when, when I met Kyle, um, there was a real connection. The, the boxes that it checked are real. I, I won't, I've always said this. I don't think it's super complicated for me, but I want to be at a place that can recruit and attract the kinds of young men that I want to build a program with. And not all institutions, not all basketball programs do that. This does. And I, I speak from my heart. I could not be more excited about being a part of, of this community. Hi, uh, Jake Shimmersong with the Vedette. Um, this is for Kyle. I wanted to know, like, when Ryan first popped up on your radar and how you came aware that he was interested in joining. Oh, that, that's a great question because there's a little story to it. So uh, we put together a candid, uh, candidate pool list of, oh, man, it might have been 100. And uh, we were just kind of going through and checking off people at the beginning that just may not fit exactly and just getting rid of some easy ones. And Ryan actually came off the list. And the reason he came off the list was in our research, we had seen that he had been so coveted by some other schools. He had had some other opportunities that he had turned down. And there were articles about how he was going to be very selective in his next choice. And so I was thinking, oh, this guy's going, you know, got aspirations to be power five from Ohio State. And so maybe we just don't, we won't hit his radar. So we asked the search firm, can you just check and see if Ryan's interested? And 
thank God he was, you know. So um, he jumped back on the list and, and started to vet him and, and talk to people who knew him. Everyone we talked to had nothing but great things to say. And, and, and in our business, uh, you can call the reference list, and of course you're going to get great information. But, you know, we talked to people like trainers, you know, compliance people, academics folks who had worked with Ryan at all of his different stops. And everyone said he had great character, was a great person. And so uh, that really turned you know, him on to us. And then when we got the chance to really sit down with him, as you can kind of see here today, I really value, and ge value genuineness and humility and intelligence and work ethic and toughness. And he just embodied all those things right away. And so uh, after I met him, I just knew he was our coach, even though we had more people to talk to, which we did. Um, nothing could kind of pull me off of, of him. He was just in my mind. And, uh, you know, Coach talked about operating from your gut, and I do the same. And so when I met him, I just had this gut feeling that he was our guy. And um, so that's what, that's what drove the decision at the end. Hi, Ryan. Kurt Pegler, WNBD. Um, I understand you may have been here as an assistant coach on the opposing bench, but uh, it's limited your exposure to Redbird Arena and Illinois State, and yet your admiration for this place. How did, how did you get to this point, knowing that this is where you wanted to be with just limited exposure here? Well, our, our, in, our, in our world of college basketball, I think um, you, know, you have a pulse on different programs and what makes them successful. Um, why some programs are built for success and why others aren't. Um, maybe they have challenges that they constantly have to overcome. My initial impressions um, guided me a little bit, to be honest with you. We were here in 2007, played one of Porter Moser's teams, and I remember being here and thinking, man, the fan support is amazing. The arena is unbelievable. This is a great job. Uh, I worked with a guy uh, a few years later at the University of Illinois, Paris Parham, who had worked here as an assistant under Jankovic. And um, the way he spoke about this place and this community, um, it resonated with me, it, and it did. And I, I called him about a week ago, and um, we talked, and he said, you know, looking back on my whole career, there's not a place that I've lived that we loved more than Bloomington Normal. Um, I'm well aware of the basketball success and the tradition that they've had here, um, but those were some of the things that guided me a little bit. Um, I talked to coaches in the league and asked for their validation on what I thought of the job. Um, I asked others, um, um, you know, do you think it's possible to win how I want to win with the kinds of guys I want to win with there? Can we attract those kinds of guys? The answers were all yes. So when you put all that together, um, the level, to be honest with you, is not and never has been my guiding force. Um, the fit has. So hopefully that answers your question. Hey, Ryan, uh, Jim Matz from Channel 25 in Peoria. Congratulations. Hey, Welcome. You Saw you doing? a little bit of champagne That's with John. Right. So. Yeah. Hey, uh, Ryan, the dream. I appreciate you thanking your high school coach and college coach. When did you want to be a coach? And I mean, today you're a head coach at a Division One school. Can you give me the emotion of uh, achieving, I assume, a long-time dream? Yeah, for sure. Uh, 20, 21 years uh, in the business, and, and I, I wanted to be a head coach. Uh, uh, my, you know, most coaches do. My mom is here today, and she could tell you I was, I was not well-rounded at all as a child. <laughs> she forced me into piano lessons. And I hated it. She made me play an instrument when I was in seventh grade. I played the bass for one year. I hated it. And my guiding force has always been the game of basketball. I don't know why. I don't know why. Um, but it's all I know. You know, it's all I know. So um, I love, as I've gotten older, I will say this, I think um, the profession itself has changed quite a bit. And I think what I draw from the profession, the satisfactions that I draw um, on a daily basis have changed a little bit. I think I'm a lot more relationship driven now. Um, I have always have been, but I think I was, I was in fast forward probably earlier in my career. And now I've got an ability to kind of slow down, enjoy the moment, dig deeper with people. I enjoy one-on-one -on -one interactions um, as, I've, as I've kind of matured through the business. 
Um, and um, I'm able to take some of the simple things that make our game so great and really take satisfaction from, from investing in those areas. Back over here, Ryan. Um, 20 years as an assistant coach, A, did you ever think it was maybe that was going to be your calling was to be an assistant? And B, is that better preparing you for this job as opposed to somebody who's maybe a five-year assistant and then a head coach before they would make a move here? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a great thought. Um, listen, I think my greatest asset that I have as, as a coach is my experience. And um, I can draw on a wide variety of experiences. There's very few things that could or would happen in a program uh, on a daily basis that I haven't been encountered with before. So um, I think it's a real uh, asset of, of mine, hopefully, moving into that next chair. Certainly, um, there's always going to be a question of, uh, you know, you haven't been a head coach before. But my message was, uh, I want to be your guy, Kyle, and I want your trust and I want you to put that trust in me, I'm confident that we'll have an ability here to knock it out of the park. Oh, Ryan, things are happening pretty fast here in the spring, especially you're going back to Ohio State after today for a couple of weeks. Um, how do you split your duties between Illinois State and Ohio State? Is it important to get maybe somebody on your coaching staff in the, in the building here as quick as possible? Yeah, I think, I think that's a, it's a great question. One that I anticipated uh, being asked, and, and um, yeah, in an ideal world, I uh, would love to have someone here in the building around um, to be around the players. I think we're fortunate right now because we're on spring break. Most of the players are gone. They're, they've gone home. They're getting away. I'll be in constant communication with them. Um, listen, the reality, I can give you uh, some political answer and, and give you an answer that, quite frankly, is probably a bunch of malarkey. Um, not many coaches have been in a position like this where you're ending one job and you don't know when and you're starting another job simultaneously. All I can tell you is this. I will do the absolute best in both roles as I possibly can. I'm already sleeping about two or three hours a night. <laughs> I don't know if that can go much less, but I will give everything I can and everything I have to both. Um, if I'm being totally transparent, there will be an imbalance uh, at times towards the current job I'm in. There will be other times of the day where there will be an imbalance towards the new job I will be in. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a unique challenge, but I, I, I sort of see it as an advantage uh, as well because I think it gives us a little bit of window here to get our message out and um, – kind of formulate our plan um, as, as we're finishing our season at Ohio State. Ryan, as you talk about your recruiting blueprint, I mean, the transfer portal the, 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 is so different now than it was five, ten years ago. Is there an emphasis on high school recruiting? Is there a, an emphasis on how, how do you evaluate all that? Yeah, it, it's, it's a great question because I think the landscape today has clearly uh, changed, you know. Um, listen, um, I will always be committed to having a very balanced roster. Um, Recruiting high school players, in, especially being in this state, if I were in a, a non-basketball state where there wasn't good coaching and you wasn't, there weren't good players and the talent pool wasn't, wasn't what you needed it to be, that would be different. We will always value and always, re, always recruit high school players. We need guys in this program who are committed to this program. And I want guys to be here so that we can have what I call regenerative leadership within the program. When I say that, uh, great programs have an ability to regenerate themselves and their leadership. Um, as freshmen become sophomores, they're learning from the juniors and seniors. And by the time they become juniors and seniors, they can teach to that new generation. It's very undervalued. That's very undervalued because the, the, in the age of the transfer portal, um, it's harder and harder to build a system and have a system that um, – you know, is consistent over time. And uh, to be honest, the type of program I'm, I'm interested in building is a consistent program where we can build consistent, sustained success. The only way you do that is by having guys in your program for three, four, five years. And that'll be very important to me. How do you think the um, 
the image and likeness rules changes are going to affect that effort at longevity that you're talking about at an institution like ISU? Yeah. Um, well, you know, I think we're all, at some level, I think we all are speculating at this point. I do think um, the money, the stage um, might be, there might be opportunities uh, out there at bigger schools for a lot of mid-major players. Um, it's a unique challenge for this, for this um, type of institution in this era. What I'm committed to and what I think we've got to be very uh, intentional about is creating a student athlete experience here above all else. That is very important to me so that our players enjoy their time here. Um, they don't want to leave. Um, the grass, I can assure you, the grass is not always greener. I can provide stats and data um, to, to prove that the grass is not always greener for guys that may want to transfer up. And quite frankly, it might not be best long term for their career. So it all comes back to your culture, your success, and the student athlete experience that you're able to create as a basketball coach and as a basketball program. So we've got some unique ideas on that. And uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking outside the box in that area. I can get into that a little bit more later. But um, I think it's a, it's a definite area that we've got to think ahead, not think behind on. Uh, for Ryan, uh, I was curious how and when you're going to start recruiting with having to go back to your old job to finish out the season? Already have. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 there will be an overlap. Um, my, my recruiting um, at Ohio State will probably be passed on uh, to some other guys on staff, but my recruiting here has already started. Yeah, has already started. So I'm hitting the ground running there. And uh, we're going to need we're going to need to put together a staff um, where we can really gain some momentum. I, I'm confident we'll be able to do that. Um, this is a very desirable place. Um, I've gotten over 1,000 text messages too. So if you've texted me and I haven't responded, I'm sorry. Um, but there is a high level interest in this in this job, and it's for good reason. Now, Ryan, you talked about the passionate fan base here. And the one thing they're passionate about is they haven't been to the NCAA tournament for 24 years now. Is, is, can this be a successful program unless you get to the NCAA tournament? Well, I, I, I would let you judge that. Um, I know what our goals will be as a basketball program, and those will involve getting to the NCAA tournament. So. Um, you know, my success and our success as a staff, I think, will will be more focused on the process of how we're going to get there. I'm not concerned with um, putting the end game out there and um, judging myself as a success or failure. I'm judging our program's success based on um, how we're able to develop our players and, and how well we're able to maximize what we have in that locker room. And I sort of that's my philosophy, and I sort of get lost, put my head in the sand and get lost in doing that. I have a belief, philosophically, that if you do that and you do the right things over and over and over and you stack great days upon one another, I just have a faith and a belief that great things will happen from there. So. Can you uh, give us a little scouting report on Maddox? And has, has he been offered yet? Maddox has not been offered yet. Um, he's, he's a heavy right-hand driver. Um, needs to work on his left hand. Um, he's, he's getting better. He's just started working with the Vertimax training in Columbus, so he was excited about that. His athleticism in the last two weeks has skyrocketed. And um, he's, he's beginning to fall in love with the game. It's fun as a, as a father to see that, you know. Um, I don't ever want to force my, my son uh, on to the game of basketball. I want, I want um, him to be passionate, uh, but I want him to find his loves in life. And uh, I know he loves technology. He loves his iPad. Um, he loves his computer. He's, he's excited uh, because he sees an opportunity to gain more followers on social media. <laughs> so it's a whole new fan base. Um, 
but uh, Maddox will be a big part, and my wife Stephanie will be a big part of uh, what this program, you know, is all about. Because when we say family, I, again, I, I'm not into. I think talk is cheap. I'm not into saying the right things, not doing the right things. Um, I believe in substance and following through on what you say. I'll be a guy that probably under promises and over delivers as opposed to the contrary. And uh, my family will be a big part of that. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Kyle. Um, we will have you having a public event here in about 20 minutes. You're more welcome to stay. Uh, yeah, yeah. What's that? We have a family picture of you in here. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great. Oh. Great. He's part of the family now, anyways. <laughs>